There was a famous meditation monk in Bangkok. His name was Joe Kun Do. And people would come to him on their birthdays and ask for a blessing. And his blessing always was, choose to do only the good. Now he said, you bless yourself. You don't need anybody else to give you a blessing. It's good to think about this. And a blessing, of course, is something that brings bliss, that brings happiness. And the wish for happiness is an important part of the practice. Metta, goodwill. And it's interesting that when the Buddha mentions goodwill, talks about it, it's almost always in connection with the precepts. He never uses the word goodwill when he's teaching generosity. He says when you're being generous, you should try to develop a mind of sympathy for the recipient. But goodwill is something else. It's something you want to make universal. It's a wish for your own happiness and the wish for happiness of others. And what's interesting about the way the Buddha expresses this, in what might be called his metta phrases, is that it always includes the fact that people are going to be happy not because you wish them happiness, but because they behave in ways that avoid harm. There's one metta phrase, I mean, no one despise anyone or cause anyone any harm. And there's another one where he says, may all beings look after themselves with ease. In other words, look after yourself without harming yourself, without harming others. There's another passage where he says, if you realize if you actually have harmed somebody, you don't beat yourself up with remorse. You just re remind yourself that, yes, that was a mistake, and you make up your mind not to repeat the mistake. And then you spread goodwill for all beings, yourself and all others. And goodwill for yourself in the sense that you don't want to beat yourself up. I guess if you come really down on yourself, thinking that you're a horrible person. It takes away the strength that you would have in order to be confident that, yes, you can do something good. And all too often, when you start thinking about your own bad points, you try to push the thought out of your mind by focusing on the bad points of other people. And when you're focusing on their bad points, then it becomes harder to treat them well. So you have goodwill for yourself, and then you have goodwill for others, reminding yourself that the behavior you engaged in was harmful. You don't want to harm others. And so you want to strengthen your resolve not to repeat the mistakes that you made. You try to think about other people's happiness. So again, it's an issue of the precepts, an issue of virtue. And then it connects with the fact that the Buddha said, when if you want to benefit yourself, you follow the precepts. If you want to benefit others, you want to get them to follow the precepts to avoid harmful behavior. which, in case you're your parent, you're dealing with children, means you have to be quite firm with them when you say that they're lying or cheating or doing something you know will cause harm. Goodwill does not mean gentleness or being soft on people or, or just being nice to them. It means thinking about their genuine welfare and then trying to figure out what would be something that you could do that would contribute to their genuine welfare? And the Buddha never measured welfare in terms of material wealth as much as he did welfare in terms of having the treasure of good karma. So when you're thinking thoughts of goodwill for others, you ask yourself, what can I do to help these people have good karma, to avoid bad karma? And that's an act of kindness. That's an act of goodwill. But of course, the precepts are only one way of finding happiness. Generosity is another, as is meditation. 
These are the areas in which the Buddha said, if you want to find happiness, this is how you do it. If you want to find happiness in a way that's harmless, this is how you do it. Because there are a lot of other pleasures you can find in life that involve harm to somebody. But these don't harm anybody. And here the field is wide open. Try to be generous without causing harm. It is possible to give too much. So the Buddha said, don't harm yourself with your generosity. But virtue is something you can do all the time. When you feel tempted to lie, you remind yourself, okay, your speech is a valuable, valuable property, a valuable treasure. And John Lee's expression, he says, bow down to your mouth every day. You've worked hard to become a human being, to have a human mouth that can express truths. Think about that Far Side cartoon where the, the guy has invented a machine that interprets what dogs are saying as they're barking, and it's all, hey, 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 hey. And human beings have the ability to say a lot more than that. And so make use of that. You worked hard to develop this ability. Use it well. And the same with your hands, the same with all the parts of your body. Use them to do things that are good. You worked hard to gain these abilities and use them well. This way you show respect for your desire for true happiness. And this is one of the reasons why we respect the Buddha. As he told us, that true happiness is something we can find. We live in a world where there is no plan for the world. There's nobody who's created it that says, well, the world is going to serve this purpose, and so you have to sacrifice your happiness for the purpose of the Creator. And the Buddha had that knowledge on the second watch of the night, on the night of his awakening. He saw beings dying, being reborn in line with the karma. He realized that this applied to everybody, from the highest levels of the cosmos all the way on down, including even the gods who thought that they were creators. Everybody is subject to karma. And the universe is not the result of any one plan, it's the result of everybody's search for happiness, which can get pretty random, which is one of the reasons why things break down and then reform and break down again, again and again and again, is that we're very unskillful in our search for happiness. So what the Buddha wanted to teach was a skill where people could find happiness. And it starts with this realization that you are free to choose this path. In a world where there's no purpose, there's no meaning, you can give yourself a purpose, you can give yourself a meaning. Because otherwise, as I think it was Kafka's reported have said, that, you know, the purpose of life is that it ends. And then it starts up again. That the part that he didn't know about, it starts up again and it ends again. It goes up and down, up and down, up and down. And there's no meaning there, but there's meaning you can give to it. You can decide that you want to find a happiness that's secure, a happiness that's harmless. And the Buddha's discovery is that it is possible through your actions. This is why when he talks about his awakening, he talks about principles related to the, your ability to do things with your actions. His shortest praise or the shortest synopsis of his awakening was the principle of causality. When this is, that is. From the rising of this comes the rising of that. When that isn't, this isn't. From the passing away of that comes the passing away of this. It sounds pretty abstract, but what he's saying is that there are several causal principles working together at the same time. It's a complex system, and the thing about complex systems is that you can manipulate them to go in the direction you want. It's not like a, a machine where you, once you turn on the motor, it just goes around and around and around and nothing happens. There's no alternative. You can push the the causal pattern in the direction that you want.
if you're making an analogy, it's, it's closer to a video game than it is to a TV show. With a TV show, everything is already planned out. You're just watching it. With a video game, you're, you're participating and you're making things happen, and things get changed as a result of your choices. But it is all about action and the power of action. I was watching a TV show just the other day. It was a French TV show where they interview people for, on the topic of Buddhism. And the one person being interviewed was saying that you know, the Buddhist awakening was that things are impermanent and unsatisfactory and impersonal. So you just the whole message was that you just sit back and let things do their thing without trying to change anything. Which is not what the Buddha talked at all. It's certainly not what he awakened to. When the Buddha described his own awakening, he gave these autobiographical accounts. He never talked about the three characteristics as being part of the awakening. It was all about the Four Noble Truths. And the Four Noble Truths are about what your desires can do. They're desires that can lead to suffering, they're desires that can lead to the end of suffering. He deals with the problem that you feel within, but he also says the causes are within, and the causes of the problems are within, but also the ability to put an end to the, the problem by attacking the causes. That comes from within, too. So his awakening was not about powerlessness. It was about the power you have to make change for the sake of happiness. So this is how we bless ourselves. We give ourselves purpose. We're free to do that. We have the freedom, we have the power. And the teachings are here for us to learn how to take advantage of that freedom and that power. For the sake of happiness, that is satisfactory. More than just satisfies. This is how we show goodwill for ourselves in a, in a really profound way. And it's showing goodwill for others, too. When your behavior is noble, which is what this path demands, it provides a, an inspiring example to other people. So they may feel inspired to so we'll look at their own actions and see what they can do for, to find happiness. And if this were a world where we could take everybody else to nirvana, the Buddha would have done that a long time ago. It's something each of us has to do for him or herself. But it's something that each of us can do for him or herself. That's the good news. And it was a sign of the Buddha's goodwill that he spent so much time formulating a teaching, formulating a community, to keep this path open. So as each of us follows this path, as is the case with any path, the more people who follow the path, the fewer weeds are going to grow up in it. Leaving it clear for the people who come in the future. It's in this way that our goodwill is all around.